Hi, I'm Liv, and welcome back to the book nook. But the book nook's changed. Look at the book nook. It's different now. Things have changed. So, the book nook has changed. It's less of a nook now and more of a wall. The bulk of this video is going to be an IKEA haul. I got all the IKEA stuff and I came home and on Thursday, on Friday, I was putting together the bookcases and basically a lot of the IKEA stuff that I got is in position. So it's hard for me to show you because I got too excited. But what I am gonna do to be really cool is I've got my receipt. <laughs> I've got my IKEA receipt. And because I wanted to, to try and pronounce the funny names, this'll go well. So the main things I bought are the bookcases behind me here and I've gone for Gersby's rather than Billy because Gersby's are cheap, they are 18 pounds, they are 180 centimeters tall and did I mention they're cheap? But they seem to be really sturdy, I've had one in the corner, that was sort of the main one that was on this wall for the whole time so I've got another three of those, so I've got four of those along this wall now, they are all up. I put them all together by myself on Friday with minimal failure. It was when I was unboxing the third one, I was like sat on the bit of cardboard and I moved my foot and I have sliced open the sole of my foot with a giant cardboard cut. <laughs> so that's fun. But anyway, so I got some Gersby's and I got some rugs that are on the floor and they are called, this will be fun, Fjada Mern. I think that was okay, Fjada Mern and Hampen got myself a coffee grinder, which is called Almaning. I needed a coffee grinder because I got myself some nice coffee beans in Portugal. Um, and the coffee grinder was 10 quid in Ikea and it's working just nicely, fine and dandy. A chopping board. But what I'm using this chopping board for is I just really wanted a nice little tray to carry like coffee. So that's what this is used for. And that is called Propmet Bergens. And it's a smartphone holder. So you've got two different sizes for different size smartphones and they're lined with felt to protect your phone. And it actually works quite well. So you can have your phone in this way or you can have your phone in this way. Um, so I use it that way if it's on charge. And I've been using this a hell of a lot. I've had my phone in this the whole time I've been putting together the bookcases, listening to Eddie Izzard comedy albums and yeah, Bergens. Then, as is tradition when going to Ikea, I got myself another blanket or throw, and this is called Varkage. Varkage. And it's, yeah, it's lovely. I also picked up a coppler, which is a three USB plug thing, and these are actually really good. So I've got a new phone, I've got myself the iPhone 8 Plus, and it's huge and it's cool, and it can do the fast charging thing. But a load of fast chargers are really expensive, but I have found, I've got one of these, and I have found that that one seems to work as a fast charger. So I picked myself up another one, plus they're just handy in general. Then I got Givandi, 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 which is like black and kind of hessian coloured string, which goes really well and nicely with the black wrapping paper, which I got. But yeah, this year everyone is getting their Christmas presents wrapped up in black paper, and some people might get it tied up with string. Another sort of IKEA tradition is that I get some stationery. So I got Fulfurger, and these are three like matte black, but they're almost like leathery plasticky cover, and they're they feel really really nice. They were three pounds, and I really like those. Then I got myself a little red pouch bag thing, which I'm using as my little first aid kit. Yes, I am the kind of person who has a first aid kit and carries it to work with them. AKA, I'm very clumsy as well as the little red bag, I got myself a new backpack from Ikea. It's black and I don't know how well you can see it, but it's really nice. It's not too deep. It's got like two pockets on the side and then it's got, this pocket has got some pockets in it and the main pocket has got some pockets in it. And then I discovered, so it's also got this velcro-y thing here so you can put it on suitcase handles. And then it's also got a pocket here as well which is where I'm keeping some spare carrier bags. So that's my new work backpack, slash I'll use it every day. So the little first aid kit thing is called Furfina. Furfina. And the backpack is Furinkla. Furinkla. And then this is how much I love Ikea and how much of a corporate shill I am for them. I even got an Ikea advent calendar. It's so cute. I nearly spent so much money just on Christmas stuff that I didn't need. Of course, the other Ikea tradition is to have meatballs, and I did, and I kept the tiny little toothpick flag that they give you in a meatball. Yeah, obviously I had to bring that home with me. And this now lives in my wallet. That is where that lives. Does my face look like a flag? 
I am a talking flag. Then on the way back from Ikea, I just want to say, we popped into the range. I don't know if, is the range like a Southwest thing? I think it is, but basically it's this just ridiculous store that sells, it like it tries to be Ikea, but it's way tackier. And it's amazing and I love it. And I went in and looked at all the Christmas stuff there. And of course it was all really tacky and glorious. But what I did pick up is my new favorite Christmas decoration. Isn't he adorable? Look at his little face. And he's carrying a little Christmas tree. He's got his own little Christmas tree. And he's got floppy little legs. And he's adorable. He's wearing a scarf. Very, very fashionable scarf. Um, so he's adorable. He's my new favourite Christmas decoration. And in the range I also got myself another new mug. But this one is adorable. Oh, and I discovered in the range, if you have got a range anywhere near you, they sell those mugs that the, the animal mugs, Price and Kensington mugs, and they are about half the price from where I got. So one thing I didn't buy in Ikea, which is one of the reasons I'd gone and part of the reason I'd hired a van. So I'd hired a van to take it there because we weren't gonna fit the three bookcases in my car. And we also were thinking that I might come home with a chair. Now, when I was walking around Ikea, I posted this one. I call this Booktuber's Corner. I don't know whether you can see that. And that is the chair that a lot of booktubers seem to have. And it's a really gorgeous looking chair and it's called Strandmon. And I've been toying with getting it for a while, um, for myself now. And basically I sat in a couple of them around the showrooms and actually I didn't find it as comfortable as I thought I would. For me, it slopes back a bit too far and the arms go down like that a bit too much and don't sort of support the elbows. So I didn't get the chair, but I have ordered a similar looking chair, but one that's slightly more upright and looks like the arms are sort of straighter up more of the way back from Argos. And I've got one coming on Monday. Now we've ordered two because my dad needs a new chair as well and he's gonna see if it's comfy for him. So I've got one coming in grey and then my one is the charcoal one, but that can't be delivered until the beginning of December. So at the moment, I'm gonna try out the other one. So me and my dad are gonna sort of try out the grey one when it arrives tomorrow. So at the moment the book nook isn't completely how I would like it because I don't have the chair. So those are all the sort of little itty bits that I got from Ikea that aren't, you know, the bookcases. So when it came to taking the books off of all the bookcases, and then when I put the bookcases together and they were up against the wall, and I was thinking, these books are never gonna fit on here. And you would think by now, working at a bookshop, I'd be a little bit more used to looking at an amount of books and working out whether they will fit on an amount of shelves. But I'm really bad at it. And when the books were just spread out in my room in piles and the bookcases, I just was like, this is never going to happen. But it has happened. A couple of instances, I have got some books behind, but that is because, well, I'll explain that when I get there. Um, but I have got some space to play around with here and room to grow. But actually on most shelves now, I don't have things sort of on top of things, which is nice. I know as I'm saying that, you can see behind me, I've got some there, but that's, no, those actually are dust jackets there. So they're not, they're not books. These here, I can't do this. These here, they're not books, they're dust jackets anyway. So that's fine. And I'm also going to show you my mini nook. I tend not to use that for reading so much purely because my bedroom is a loft bedroom and the temperature up there goes from like freezing cold to boiling hot. So other than sleeping up there, it's not necessarily the most comfortable place to sort of sit and read. But now I have got a little bit more of a nook up there because the book, one of the bookcases that was down here is now up there. So I will, sorry, I'll take you and show you that one as well. When it comes to organizing the books, I'm really curious as to how other people organize their books. So obviously alphabetical is one way to go but I don't actually like doing it alphabetical. It confuses me, and plus, because I've got a lot of proofs and I've got some large format ones, it would, the, the sizes, it would just, no. So what I have got is I've got sort of non-fiction in one place, then I've got sort of my proofs, then I've got some sort of translated fiction, some publishers, and then I've got more or less a full bookcase of short fiction but I will show you all that. But I am just really intrigued as to how do you organize your books on your bookcases? Do you organize them at all? Do you have a sort of system where you've got some bookcases that are organized and then you've got new incoming books? That's the thing as well. Do you separate your red books from your unread books? I know I do. All of my red books are upstairs. These are all of the unread books. That's another problem for another video. So do you separate out your red and your unread books? And do you organize them in different ways or the same ways? I'm just really curious and I would be intrigued to know how other people do it. So yeah, have a chat with me in the comments below about how you organize your bookshelves, please. That would be nice, thank you. So let's go and have a little look at the shelves and then I will take you up to the mini nook as well. 
So, these are the shells. This is the wall of shells. Move some furniture out of the way. Cat bed with no cat in it. So, you will notice in a few places there is some double stacking. Down here, I had to be a little bit creative with this space because there's a plug, like here. So I couldn't put the bookcases together, which is quite annoying. But I had to be creative with the space and I had some large format sort of non-fiction stuff and some, uh, what do you call them, sort of magazines, that's the word. So I put them there and some larger format non-fiction here. And then I've got an Ikea lamp sitting atop them. It's not perfect, it's bugging me, but we'll figure out a more perfect solution. So then on this bookcase I've got non-fiction along here, hardbacks, and then these ones here are sort of ones that I'm reading in bits and bobs. Then we've got paperback non-fiction here. Then we go up a shelf and these these are the shelves and this whole bookcase is a little bit more interchangeable. So this shelf here is non-fiction November stuff and subtle knife, uh, subtle knife, northern light stuff, his dark materials, and a few creative -y non fiction stuff that I couldn't fit anywhere else. So, this shelf is kind of a work in progress. And this one here, I'm going to hide from your view because that is for the, the next haul video. <laughs> then I've got poetry on here. Then on the top, I've got my five star TBR prediction stack of books, plus a pineapple, plus a thing, and a thing, and a framed thing. So yes, that's, that's that bookshelf. Then let's go over to the top here. I've got another lamp, and actually I can turn this one off to show you this lamp, because I really love it. Oh, there's also a star thing. Can't remember where I got this lamp now, but I really love it. It's a little, it's got like a little ball and head socket thingy, and he's adorable. I'm not trying to remember where I got that one. So then we've got, ooh. Then we've got some nice hardbacks here that kind of just live up here, because they don't really sort of work anywhere else. Then I've got a tin. Then there's a fox. Oh, I'm not tall enough. Okay, let's just go all the way along the top. Then there's a fox, then there's another pineapple, then there's the wizard gnome, then there's Christmas presents because I'm really organised, and then there's my Fitzcarraldo editions. Okay, so that's all along the top there. Then this shelf here. So, well, mainly this bookcase, this bookcase here is fiction. I've got, actually, graphic novels down the bottom here. So we've got all my graphic novels and sort of more illustrated books down the bottom here. Then we come up and we've got large format proofs, not as large format proofs on this one. Then these are sort of same size proofs as these. And then on this shelf here, I have separated these books out for a reason, but I'm going to talk about that in another video. And I've also got, this is a card that we sell at work. Now you guys know how much I love Tom Gold's illustrations. And I didn't realise he'd done a cover of The New Yorker. And how perfect is this? How perfect. So I'm going to get a little frame for that one and put that one up. Probably in here if I can, in this little gap. I feel that's a good place for that. I've also got a tiny empty bottle of Scrumpy because it's a cool little bottle. Anyway. Thing of bookmarks and a feather. There you go. Olympus Strip 35. Phone. Hello. Robot man. Then on this bookcase, this is fiction. This is all fiction. Yes, it is all fiction. I've got on the bottom shelf there are ones that are unread that I'm probably less likely to read quickly. So they're sort of not as urgent. Then on this shelf I've got sci-fi and fantasy and a bit of YA and my stupid leg massager that looks very naughty. Then on this shelf I've got some more fiction. I've got some slightly more classic fiction things there. And then behind the copy of New Statesman, which is the Ali Smith speech, I have got a few bits of crime there. Then up here I've got, oh, this is an empty bottle from when I went to Edinburgh of Brew Lab, their cold brew coffee. It's gorgeous. I need to order some more of this. It's relatively expensive, but it's gorgeous cold brew coffee. So then this shelf is slightly more contemporary fiction that I want to get around to a little bit more and slightly sort of, some of them smaller publishers uh, like Galley Burger Press. Hello. Um, yeah, and then this shelf is all translated fiction. So that's where I keep translated fiction. And creepy little thing, frame typewriter. Elephant. So you also get to see my little knickknacks. Ooh, well, this is. Now, this shelf here, we've got some more sort of small presses and things. So we've got Europa editions, and then I've got these are all my and other stories editions. And I've got a lovely little egg timer. Let's get that going. Do -do. And fidget spinners because I'm a 12 year old boy at heart. Cactus light because I saw Simon had either this one or a very similar one, and I had to have it. Then this is. This is something that I've not done for a while and need to do, but this is where I keep all tickets of things that I've been to over the years, and I've got all my stuff from Porto there. So I really need to update that because I've got all the Scotland stuff down the back here as well. So then we have got all these shelves here. One, two, and three. Four. No, one, two, three, 
they're all short fiction. Now I could have easily had another shelf of short fiction up here. Instead, I have got the thing that I don't really like, but I have got some books. You're not gonna be able to see it. I've got some books down behind here. Now these shelves aren't deep enough. You can see they're not deep enough for a double stack. So I've got some front ways around down the back, which really offends me, but I have no other choice. So I've got short fiction collections on here, slightly more contemporary short fiction collections on here and ones that I wanna get around to sooner. Then I've got some hardback anthologies, anthologies. And then we've got some sort of poetry magazines and things and then hardback single author uh, short fiction collection. So you can see a few down the back there. Then on the bottom shelf, I've got all my second hand fiction that I've picked up over the years. So let's go and have a little look at the mini nook, shall we? Ooh. So welcome to my bedroom, you lucky, lucky things. <laughs> so this is my mini nook. So what have we got in the mini nook? Well, we've got my GAB radio thingy. Then I've also got my typewriters that are on display-ish because I had to move some furniture around. And because, as I mentioned, I am a child, I have a Buzz Lightyear and it even makes all the noises and things. And then, yeah, these shelves here are books that I have read this year recently. I've got some more shelves over on the other side, which I will show you in a minute. Then I've got a few CDs that I do still own and the all-important lint roller for anyone who owns a cat. Then I've got my multiple copies of George Saunders a few little hardbacks, multiple copies of Tom Hanks, multiple copies of the Essex Serpents. These are lots of cuddly toys that are ostensibly for my cat, and he does play with them occasionally, um, but they're also for me. And then, yeah, I've just got some pictures and stuff up here. Now, as I say, I've got more shelves here in my bedroom. Now, the thing that frustrates me about here is obviously moving to sort of uni accommodation and then bouncing back and forth from home and that it's these aren't perfect and it's not where I'd like them ideally and it's just making use of the space. So don't judge me, but yeah, these are the other shelves I've got in my room. Over here behind this messy corner, I've got some non-fiction on the top shelf, then sort of some weirdy, weirdy fiction, so weird format fiction. So I've got like House of Leaves, Shiv of Theseus, and some uh, B.S. Johnson and some Mark Supporto in there as well. Then I've got three stacks of poetry behind the guitar in there. Then we have got some fantasy and stuff on the bottom there. Harry Potter, that's where Northern Lights did live. Then some other little bits and bobs there. Then all my Robert Jordans and a silly little didgeridoo that I made. That there, in there, two didgeridoos in there. I know how to play the didgeridoo, a little known fact. Then Pokemon cards, because again, I'm a 12 year old child. There's a pig on the floor. Um, then, yeah, just other books. This is just making me a little bit anxious because, as I say, it's not all where I would want it to be. So, that is the new improved book nook, which should technically now be called the book wall, but that doesn't really work, and the whole, the whole room is a nook. The whole room is a nook. And a little glimpse of the mini nook, which I think I am going to try and use more now, although I do like reading in bed because I can just... anyway. Also look out for another Wex vlog video in the coming days. I'm going to do another little one of that. Things are progressing at work we've got a staircase now the new floor is getting there um everything is very dusty very dusty everyone's very sneezy very coffee and my hands are drier than a badger's proverbial where does that saying come from and who found out that a badger's anyway thanks very much for watching guys and i shall see you next time bye